the bantam planet Pluto is the farthest object in our planetary group. Many huge numbers of minor cold planets and space rocks populate this district of room inside the Kuiper Belt. Once remembered to be the tenth planet in our planetary group, Pluto was named after Pluto, the Roman lord of the hidden world. Anyway, Pluto lost this remaining in 2006. As per current logical hypotheses, the Sun-based framework contains incalculable space rocks, a modest number of bantam planets, and just eight planets. Our insight into the universe has extended enormously over the recent hundreds of years, and we currently have a smart thought of how planets work, what they're made of, and whether they may house mankind in the far future. Yet maybe there is still an extraordinary arrangement to find about the stars in our own cosmic system. What secrets has the James Webb Space Telescope at last tackled about Pluto? Does it harbor life either known or then again obscure, and does it have an inside sea? Go along with us as we investigate the extraordinary secret of what the James Webb Space Telescope found on Pluto that was concealed up and down the tenth planet. Pluto was greatly respected for a considerable length of time. Individuals saw that it had the littlest moon in the planetary group. The way that its circle was slanted and oval didn't trouble anybody. Pluto was somewhat of an oddball. However, it was our weirdo kids could connect with it on the grounds that it's small scale. Furthermore, numerous grown-ups could relate to its situation as an untouchable. The general population felt constrained to guard Pluto, and there was public shock when Pluto was renamed as a minor planet 15 years back. It is perhaps not unexpected that the Worldwide Cosmic Association reconsidered their meaning of a planet, and Pluto was left off the rundown. As per the updated rules, a planet must have three qualities. It needs to circumvent the sun, it should be enormous enough that its own gravity can shape it into a circle or something close to one, and it probably eliminated any flotsam and jetsam from its circle. Pluto bombed the third and last evaluation, so we have a bantam planet. The term planet has been utilized in a much more extensive sense for centuries. During the 1600s, at the point when Galileo prepared his telescope on Jupiter, everybody thought any huge circling object overhead was a planet. Indeed, even moons counted. When cosmologists first found the rough shakes we now allude to as space rocks during the 1800s, they additionally alluded to them as planets. From the beginning, Pluto was viewed as a planet. It was at first found in January 1930 by novice space expert Clyde Tombaugh, utilizing photos got utilizing a telescope. Tombaugh detailed his finding promptly to the observatory's head. I have found your planet X, he bragged. Tombaugh was insinuating a speculative tenth planet that would circle the sun beyond Neptune. However, things took an odd turn when it was found that Pluto was in good company in the universe beyond Pluto's circle. In 1992, an object just a tenth as wide was found. From that point forward, just about 2,000 frozen bodies have been found in the Kuiper Belt, the coldest area of the planetary group's edges. There could be significantly more to come. Questions were raised when it was found that Pluto had so many neighbors. What did these new planets share, practically speaking, with Earth? Why did they stand apart abruptly? Space experts were confounded about what comprised a planet. Teacher Mike Brown investigations the planets as a planetary researcher at Caltech in Pasadena. He found the primary Kuiper belt object noticeable at the time that appeared to be bigger than Pluto in 2005. In recognition of the TV program Xena, Fighter Princess, its name was changed to Xena. This frosty leftover was made when the sun and planets were exceptionally youthful. Brown recommended that Xena ought to be the tenth planet, assuming Pluto was the tenth. However, on the off chance that Xena didn't legitimacy the situation with a planet, then neither does Pluto. In 2006, conflicts over where to put Pluto and Xena arrived at a limit. The activity finished at a meeting of the Worldwide Cosmic Association in Prague. After broad conversation, a modified meaning of a planet was advertised for a decision on the last day of the August meeting. Bantam planet status was granted to Pluto and Xena. Given its significance in stirring up how we might interpret the nearby planet group, the name is loft since Brown's work added to ousting Pluto as a planet. He has procured the Twitter handle at PlutoKiller. Banners and course books were imitated and refreshed quickly. However, a large number of planetary researchers have never refreshed their techniques, and this is particularly valid for the people who center around Pluto. 
that could be mockery or malevolence on their part. In any case, me and others contend in two papers that there are likewise legitimate motivations to reject the IAU's meaning of a planet. The researchers read various books, articles, and letters to assemble this data. Some of the papers were exceptionally old. They outline the various manifestations through which the term planet has been utilized by researchers and the overall population, and the reasons were not generally clear. Among Mars and Jupiter and the space rock belt is where you'll track down this thing. After its revelation in 1801, Ceres was given planet status close by Pluto. As more objects were found in the space rock belt, Ceres was professed to have lost its planet status. Not set in stone that Ceres had many neighbors. By the finish of the 1800s, as per the legend, Ceres lost its planetary status since it was at this point not recognizable. That is the way Ceres and Pluto were comparably tormented. Mir's gathering now states that this isn't the genuine story. Indeed, even until the 20th century, Ceres and different space rocks were as yet viewed as planets. But minor planets, a science pamphlet reported in 1951 that a large number of planets are known to circle our sun. With the proviso that the tremendous larger part of these planets were little fry, with sizes going from that of a city block to that of the condition of Pennsylvania. It was only after the 1960s that minor planets turned into a slanderous term. They were seen by shuttle. Interestingly, by then, planetary appearances were as yet present in the greatest space rocks. However, the larger part of the more modest ones were unusual protuberances. This demonstrated they weren't simply more modest adaptations of the bigger round planets. The way that space rocks frequently neglect to escape their circles is unimportant to the choice to rebrand them. Shouldn't something be said about moons, you inquire? Until the 1920s, they were alluded to as planets or optional planets by researchers. Assuming it's astounding that, regardless of logical proof, to the opposite, the normal act of alluding to moons as planets perseveres. Non-logical media, for example, celestial chronological registries, were to a great extent answerable for the shift. Horoscopes in these tomes are gotten from the planet. Stargazers insisted that keeping the quantity of planets overhead little was more clear. Later, however, new data gathered through space investigation once again introduced moons to the planetary family, essentially for some tremendous circular ones, including moons. The term planet was utilized again in academic distributions beginning in the 1960s. The Worldwide Galactic Association's meaning of a planet is, in short, not the primary. The word has gone through various definition shifts. Hence, it very well may be adjusted again on the off chance that necessary. The IAU's definition is frequently guarded in light of the fact that it keeps the quantity of planets from going crazy. What might your life resemble assuming that the universe contained hundreds or thousands of planets? How might the normal individual actually recall them all? Precisely what might we put on the lunch bags? Conversely, Mere worries that zeroing in on just eight planets will deter individuals from studying the universe. Perhaps, in the end, the meaning of a planet is emotional. In 2015, when NASA's new Skyline test flew by Pluto, it uncovered a planet with significantly more action than anybody had anticipated. Nitrogen precipices suggestive of Norway's harsh coastline. What's more, methane ice shards as tall as structures can be tracked down on the diminutive person planet. The Earth is scarred by gaps more profound than the fabulous ravine and frozen volcanoes transcending higher than the Himalayas. The cameras on board the shuttle photo a huge heart-molded highlight on the distant globe, which made huge numbers of fans on Earth. Eight years have passed since researchers got that first short of breath sight, yet they are still seeing the world through open-minded perspectives. Since New Skylines was going at 32,300 miles per hour when it made its nearest way to deal with the Bantam planet, it was as it were ready to take nitty-gritty photos of the side of Pluto that was pointing toward the sun. One of them was immediately stowed away from view by the murkiness. Now that researchers have dissected the nearby UPS of the close to side taken by the rocket days before it flashed past, they are beginning to check out at the pictures of the other half. Researchers allude to such a region as the far side or the clouded side. Notwithstanding the low goals, the photos obviously portray the scene with detail down to around one mile. That is all things considered multiple times more itemized than pictures caught by the Hubble Space Telescope, which circles the Earth. 
researchers currently have a new point of view on this unique world, thanks to the examination of many pictures, revealing insight into questions, for example, whether a sea lies underneath the frigid hull and how mixtures freeze out of the climate to shape the planet's surface. The insights even loan assurance to the possibility that the chilly world could uphold life. Anyway, there are secrets introduced by the photos, for occasion the ice parts that look like. High rises were as of late found on Pluto's far side, yet they presently seem to circle the planet. In light of this, their starting points are among the Bantam planet's most noteworthy secrets. Richard Binzel, a planetary researcher at the Massachusetts Foundation of Innovation in Cambridge and a New Skylines co-agent, says Pluto is the gift that continues to give. Then in 1996, researchers had the option to see surface subtleties at a goal of 310 miles, thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope. The photos were foggy, yet they showed a planet-like globe with higher worldwide contrast than some other planet in the nearby planet group, including Earth. In July 2015, New Skylines broadly noticed a heart formed include just north of the close to sides equator, affirming that Pluto is for sure a dynamic world. Sputnik Planum, a frozen bowl irritating and streaming with gigantic icy masses, is situated inside Pluto's left ventricle and is currently known to significantly affect the planet's dynamic beats of sublimating ice ascend up high as the sun warms the frozen plane, just to fall again when the fact that the beating makes nightfalls possible of the heart spilled Pluto. Francis Nimmo, a planetary researcher at the College of California, Santa Cruz, and his partners saw something odd about Sputnik Planum not long after the first photos of Pluto's close to side were shipped off Earth. It is arranged nearly totally inverse Pluto's biggest moon, Charon. The opportunity of a mishap happening is 5% at most. All things considered, recreations show that an underground ocean started to ascend into the break, comparably the bowl was shaping. Nitrogen gas from Pluto's climate consolidated and froze in the frigid hole. Pluto's current arrangement is the consequence of a tremendous weight brought about by the amassing of extra water and ice. The idea of a sea underneath the surface isn't new. However, the far side photographs have given critical help for this hypothesis. Some of the most persuading proof comes from tumultuous territory, a befuddling interwoven of slopes, gaps, and pleas situated on Pluto's contrary side from Sputnik Planum. Researchers accept that in space rock or comet influence caused seismic waves to tear through and around Mars, Mercury, and Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. When these tremors at last crashed on the contrary skyline, they tore the surface in a manner like what we see on Pluto's cold moon, Charon. Planetary researcher Oliver White from the CI Foundation in Mountain View, California, who didn't take part in the concentrate yet made a geologic guide of the far side. Battles that the highlight appears to imitate one's notice somewhere else in the nearby planet group. But that the goal in the picture is low, a greater part of different researchers share this assessment. Perhaps we won't know except if we make a return trip. The disclosure of various breaks on Pluto's far side, among other geographical characteristics, loans trustworthiness to the possibility of a subsurface sea and may try and give knowledge into the planet's development. For quite a long time, researchers have theorized that Pluto C had a virus start, implying that it was frozen at that point. The Bantam planet was shaped, and eventually, the radioactive rot in its rough center would have delivered sufficient intensity to break down it. The ice would have contracted as it liquefied, causing breaking on a superficial level. This development of the ice as it froze would have prompted surface breaking. If this is the case, then Pluto's surface ought to seem badly crumpled and broken photos taken as of late. However, new skylines just caught pictures of fissures, demonstrating that the Bantam planet C was once fluid but has now frozen somewhat. For example, photographs of Pluto's far side show a gigantic break that runs the length of the planet's close to side. It has advanced to the point that it wraps around the entire Bantam planet from the North Pole toward the South Pole on the inverse side like the East African break framework that separates that mainland into two. This one likewise separates expanses of land. Pluto's crack, as opposed to Earth's, is reasonable a scar from the freezing and ever-expanding sea as opposed to proof of moving mainlands. The age of the fissure demonstrates that the fluid sea instantly began to cool after it was presented to the air. If so, marine life could prosper there. The dark red shade of the water, which suggests that it is stained with natural atoms, was seen in examples that had likely spilled out from the sea on the close to side. 
The perplexing organic matter with a ruddy earthy colored variety has been made in the lab by radiation, similar to sunlight-based breeze or enormous beams. Thus, it is doable that this could occur in a world like Pluto. Furthermore, ammonia permits the arrangement of atoms necessary for life, like the bases found in RNA and DNA. Red aminal dice on Pluto's close to side is a significant pointer that the Bantam planet might be wealthy in natural mixtures, an idea which has gained a lot of help among planetary researchers. It doesn't infer that life started on Pluto, but rather that it could make do if given to the planet. The far side estimations have accomplished more than just map in the look for life on Pluto. They have too brought forth various secrets. Researchers were shocked to see ice lumps the size of high rises in the easternmost part of the close to side in the underlying photos sent back from the James Webb telescope. Once in a while arriving at levels of one mile, roughly multiple times the level of the Domain State building in New York City, these edges are similarly circulated and rise sharp and knife-like. Very high, they might come to a length of 19 miles. It would be a bad dream to attempt to get about around here. Anyway, until specialists found what lay on the opposite side of the planet, they stayed a simple blip. The ongoing guide is foggy, yet it's not difficult to make out that the bladed geology goes around the whole border. Returning on the western edge of the close to side, they are one of Pluto's major secrets since they range a region on the far side that is multiple times as immense as their degree on the close to side. On high countries and levels, ghastly estimations show that the edges are made of methane ice, forming a belt around the equator. However, no one knows without a doubt how they start. Conceivably like ice on Earth, methane in the climate set and tumble to the ground. Perhaps they're the remaining parts of a covering of methane ice that the extraordinary daylight has eroded. The sharp edges have roused a few specialists to consider the second chance, as they are comparative to structures that arise in the Andes, though on a lot more limited size. The penitents of South America are only a couple of meters in level and create in sloping regions. Light is thought to play a part in the development of penitents since they point toward the sun and develop close to the equator where sunlight-based radiation is most extraordinary. Sublimation, the cycle that evidently cuts down box between edges, as is cutting edges supposed to be driven by sunlight. One thing is sure. Grasping the ice pieces in Pluto's landscape more generally requires a profound plunge into the Bantam planet's environment. The historical backdrop of Pluto is significant of humankind's ceaseless journey for information and the dynamic nature of how we might interpret the universe. In the meantime, scientists will further develop existing environment models to better reflect noticed peculiarities. They need to endeavor to reproduce the states of Pluto's environment and conceivable sea in a lab. The James Webb Space Telescope will be pointed more straightforwardly at the minor arrangement. Planet Webb can't take high-resolution pictures of Pluto. However, it can utilize longer frequencies and is subsequently bound to find something unforeseen. Now we're left contemplating whether Pluto will at any point answer our deep-rooted question.